Is blue better? I can't really tell. Like, I wanted to do yellow, right? But yellow on this thing that I have, first of all, it doesn't want to change. But it looks more green than yellow, doesn't it? Should we go with this? Let's go with this. What's up everyone and welcome back here at the Neon Pavilion. My name is Niklas and it is once again time for me to geek out about graphic design. Because today is the day we finally know the graphics and slogan of the Eurovision 2023. We are here again. Last year I did a video talking about the graphics for the Eurovision in Turin. I have also done a video where I talked about the graphics for the Junior Eurovision Song and Test. And now we finally know what 2023 23 is going to look and sound like and since i do have a little bit of an interest in graphic design let's go over it i say a little bit like i haven't worked in in photoshop ever since i was like a teenager whatever <laughs> if you haven't seen it already this is the logo and slogan for this year show very bright and colorful especially compared to what we've seen in the past couple of years and let me start off uh, with the graphics first I really like, first of all, I want to say that as the first thing. I really love that it is bright graphics this year. Eurovision for the past couple of years have been very much like dark colors. Very much this like either like a lot of a lot of dark purple and dark blue backgrounds we've seen. And while that may make sense, especially for like a Saturday evening show, it has all just kind of blended in with each other. A lot of it has been kind of the same. I think I talked about in last year's video as well, but I really loved what Rotterdam did uh, with the open up graphics, especially like the uh, edition that they did, the revision, that's what I wanted to say, the revision they did for 2021, where it was a little bit more playful, it was a little bit more colorful, because you remember that. I'm not saying that you cannot remember like, dark graphics but i think the reason that they often feel like they are a little bit more forgettable it is because that we've seen that so many years i mean look at something like you know i actually think i'm just gonna stop myself here i went into a little rant about some of the uh, older designs that i don't know if i really dislike them as much as i made it sound in this video and it was it was a little unnecessary i think i have some opinions that i think some of the Dark colors just is a little boring because you've seen it so many times and when you have the same color over and over again it just becomes a little repetitive. But that doesn't make the designs bad and I think that's how I made it sound in this video which was a little bit of a shame. So we'll just uh, cut over this part and we'll cut back to talking about uh, something else. I say something else because I don't remember what's next over here, but let's give it a go. If you have some very distinct colors in what you're doing, it makes it a lot easier for people to remember. I feel like last year's was a little bit more memorable just because it was these like, very like red colors, which we hadn't seen a lot in recent years in Eurovision. But this one in particular is very memorable and it feels very modern as well. While last year they played on these like, you know, retro vibes that definitely fits in Italy very well but is also a trend in graphic design this very much is this like flat design that's been very popular over the past couple years and continues to be very popular going with such bright neon colors which you can probably imagine why the neon pavilion likes <laughs> but going with these like bright neon colors along with this like very flat look it gives the contest such a modern look i feel like it gives it more of a modern look than we've really seen with anything in recent times this feels modern and it feels young and if that's the kind of like if that's the audience that the ebu and the bbc is really looking at at the moment it's like those are the ones they want to attract now and i know that for for bbc this is a big deal right you know changing that perception of what eurovision is in the uk Maybe you need something that feels very modern and, you know, you look at, I'm not going to talk about the semi-final allocation draw here, but it was held just before I'm filming this video, so I still have very fresh in my memory. And it feels like, you know, what a lot of what they were doing there was talking about, you know, Eurovision in the modern age, what Eurovision is now, and I feel like it's such a big part of it this year that they want to show how Eurovision is moving forward because that is a very important thing if you want this to succeed in the UK. And I feel like this kind of graphics, I feel like it shows that. 
The graphics has been designed by a UK company Super Union in collaboration with Ukrainian creative studio Starlight Creatives. And I love that they are able to, you know, do this collaborative work. We already knew when it was going to be this like hybrid Eurovision, you know, hosted by the BBC in the UK, but hosted on behalf of Ukraine. We knew that the BBC and the EBU wanted to have as many Ukrainian elements in it as possible. And doing a creative collaboration like this not only shows what we are capable of doing now with the technology that we have. And I love the fact that people are able to, you know, collaborate across borders like this. It's something I wish we all did more, but that's another story. But I love that they're doing it. And I love that you can also tell that this is a graphic that tries to both show that it's Ukrainian and show that it is a UK show and they do it in very clever ways I mean we have those super bright colors where the blue that I have behind me here the blue and the yellow to symbolize the Ukrainian flag but then you also have like the small little details like for example it's called Penny Lane uh, the font that they're using uh, for the slogan and they're also using for these like generic which it says Eurovision Song Contest uh, 2023 they're using this font which is inspired by these like cast iron sounds that you see all over the UK and that was being used in the olden times and especially very prominent still in Liverpool. And I like that they're using that because yes, it's a, it's a little subtle thing that you wouldn't notice if you didn't know, but it shows that this is both a Liverpool show and a Ukrainian show. And I love that they're actually using this. I think, and I think I even mentioned that last year with Italy as well, because I feel like they did something similar. I think it should almost be mandatory in a way to actually try to incorporate a country's, a host country's flag into the graphics because it means you sometimes have to think a little bit more creative and you are forced to use some more colors and you could have just as easily done like a, you know, dark yellow and a dark blue and you could have done something like that. But it is times in Europe where we want to think more positive. We we need these uh, positive rays of sunlight that we do experience every once in a while. And the Eurovision is one of those, you know. So to bring something that's really bright, I think also makes a lot of sense. I do also want to touch on something that I feel like I also kind of talked about last year, which is this with not really having an emblem. Because that's the same thing this year. While the graphics may have this like beating, pulsing hard in the middle, that's like the the main graphic it's not too far from the sound waves that we saw last year and it's not an emblem the same way that the jellyfish or whatever it was from all aboard or the star that i mentioned previously from tel aviv those were very clearly emblems which was almost like a secondary logo to the eurovision logo and i talked about last year how i think that's a bit of a shame because you have this eurovision brand you have this logo which is very recognizable use that some more i think it's bad when when you don't really use it because that is the eurovision brand and anyone who's worked with brands and graphics design before know that it's so important to have this streamlined visual identity so people can just like glance over something and be like yep that's eurovision and you don't really do that if you have like this separate emblem every single year so it is interesting that we now have two years in a row where we don't have an emblem anymore that we've been so used to but we still we instead have graphics that incorporate the Eurovision uh, generic logo and even more so this year I feel like because we're working with that beating heart which is very much you know the Eurovision that is the heart it is what's you know you see that heart and you recognize that that's the Eurovision heart and I do think that that should be used some more you know when when that generic branding was first introduced back in 2004 I feel like there was a few years where they really used that and that was really the graphics you know you wanted to do something centered around that heart as much as I love having new graphics to look at and get excited about every year I do think that your vision sometimes maybe lack that continuous visual identity and it is interesting that they've actually kind of started doing that that they have that generic look that they're using on the youtube channel and they're using on the website in the off season and something that i can't help but notice is that that very flat design using the heart that you have in that generic brand it's very much in the same kind of style as the uh, eurovision logo and uh, graphics that we're seeing this year I don't know if that's deliberate and I tried looking into it to try to see if it was actually the same people who have worked on it because if that was the case 
That would make a lot of sense. But I cannot find anything about who has actually made uh, the graphics, the generic graphics that the Eurovision.tv uses. And I tried to ask a few people on uh, on Twitter if I was right in seeing that. This is very much, looks very much inspired by that. But unfortunately, none of the people that I reached out got back to me. But I think it is interesting. Maybe we are looking into that in the future, Eurovision may become more of a streamlined visual identity where the logos from each and every year don't differ as much as we've kind of been used to. I don't know, those are all just speculations. Maybe it can just be this year and maybe it's because of BBC working differently together with the EBU than some other broadcasters may do. Maybe it's because they don't want it to be like so clearly a UK or so clearly a uh, Ukraine show this year that by mixing it together you do get a little bit more generic. I don't know what it is but I just think it's really interesting and I'm interested to see how it's gonna move forward like if a country that has like really strong strong ideas of what a Eurovision graphic should be if they win uh, this year who knows how it's going to look next year. But it'll be interesting to see no matter what. But I like it. I think, you know, if I were to round this off before we get into the slogan, which honestly, I don't have a lot to say about spoiler alert, but it is what it is. If I were to round it off right now, I do want to say I think it's really cool. Like I said, I love these bright colors. I think it is bright colors that we need and to really, you know, send a positive message with this show because that's what we need to do in these times that we're living in at the moment. So I think it makes so much sense to go with something bright and something bold. You know, I really, I applaud them for doing something that's a little bit more bold and not so much vanilla. And I think this is really gonna pop on the TV screens in May. I'm very much looking forward to seeing it even more in motion. But let's talk about the slogan. United by Music is the slogan this year, bringing us back into those feel good helping the world slogans that we've had in the past, like building bridges and come together. I think the most fun thing about this is that OGA Sweden, back when they hosted the OGE Second Chance contest back in, I believe it was 2018, they used this slogan. They used United by Music. And I feel like even Dan who worked on that design, he's talked about on Twitter that he feels like, you know, that was something he came up with because, you know, you just needed some kind of slogan for this contest, but it's not something he could ever see on the actual Eurovision. And now we have it. Look, I'm sorry. I get why they're doing this. You know, it's, it's the United Kingdom. So we are united. I get that. United by music, it is war times, it is troubling times. Look, I get why you want to go down this route, and I get why you want to make something that tells this story. But this just feels so lazy. It feels like, you know, it's one of those like five minute brainstorms where you just have to come up with something on the spot. And you come up with the easiest thing possible, which is United by Music. There you go. I don't know, to me it just feels super cheap and something that hasn't been put a lot of thought into. I think I talked about it last year as well. If, if it was up to me, the Eurovision slogan should just go. I feel like they don't really add any value into the branding of it. And I know that it's mainly done because that way you have a unique hashtag that you can use to track engagement. That's most likely the reason why we're seeing these slogans while we're still seeing them. But I do not think they're necessary. We've had amazing graphics in the past, I feel like, where we didn't have a slogan back before the slogan was introduced. And I mean, especially back in the days when it wasn't taken so seriously. I, f I think it began, if I remember correctly, it began back in 2003 with a magical rendezvous. No one noticed that that was a slogan that year. And you didn't have to have it plastered all over the graphics. And I just gotta say, I have a guilty pleasure for, for the graphics in 2003. I love the claymation style of it. So cool, so unique. But I don't think they need to be there. And I don't think they need to be there up front and center and be the main thing that you're seeing on stage when it comes to... Not on stage, but on the graphics. You know what I mean, right? It doesn't need to be there. The graphics speaks for themselves. You don't need the slogan that you need to force feed into what you're doing. Especially not if you don't want to spend time on it, actually making something that feels truly creative and that truly feels like something. This feels cheap to me. And there's not really much more I can say about it. I do wonder why they decided to. Like I said, I, I get why they want to go down this route and have this very inclusive one and talking about being united. 
But I feel like even just having hashtag unite, I feel like that would almost have been better. Or hashtag united. I don't know. Because, like, the smaller it is, the less you think about it. But just like last year, where you had to think a lot about the sound of beauty and trying to figure out what does that mean and never really understanding it. And that kind of, like, took your focus away from it. This is the same. Like, I look at this graphic and I think these are really cool, these are really bold. And then it just annoys me, this United by Music. It just feels, ah. Uh, maybe I just don't really like slogans. Maybe that's just not my thing. But I was expecting a little bit more, if I'm honest. Anyway, those are my thoughts. All in all, I think BBC is doing a great job. I mean, looking at, for example, the graphics that they've done for you to decide, I didn't expect much from the BBC this year. But they've really found some people who are super creative very good at doing their job, and they really made something that looks very cool. I'm excited to see how that heart's gonna get more incorporated, for example, with flags and, and the graphics and everything coming into May. That's one of the worst things with doing these videos, is that, you know, the on-screen graphics, we don't get to see them until May, so I can't really comment on those. But I just hope that it's gonna be a very bright and very exciting look, and I'm interested to see, because we have something that that's so bright and bold and out there, I really hope the stage design is gonna be that too, that it's gonna be big and it's gonna be bright and it's not just gonna be LED walls. Yeah, so in case in case you didn't guess it, the uh, stage design wasn't out by the time I filmed this video. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I had a lot of things uh, to do at my internship, so I couldn't get it out earlier. But I have thoughts. I have thoughts on, uh, on the stage design, so check back here on the channel in a couple days and, and we'll get to that. But those were my thoughts on the graphics and slogan for this year's Eurovision in Liverpool. What do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments if you want to. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new for more Neon Pavilion content. And then I'll hopefully see you guys very soon. I just knocked over a can. I was drinking a little bit of, of Fanta before we're getting started. Have a good one. I'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>